I just felt like it was uh, I had to be very well mentally prepared because that's a big uh, thing going into the college level. You know, I mean, I've, I've always played football growing up my whole life, and you know, it's, it's a difference because you have to grow up and you have to grow into the college football. So I had to be, you know, very well, much uh, mental, mentally prepared this year more than ever. Dick, what was Coach Smith like in terms of talking to you, you know, in the preseason or whatever? To, to he kind of, he kind of, you, you know, he kind of demanded, you know, he, that I had to grow up and you know become a player because I had to help the team, you know, and I and I appreciate that from him. You know, he uh, he's allowed me to become a better player and a better person, and he's a big part of uh, the, our success as a wideout group and my success as an individual. Did, when you say prepared, though, are you talking about, for example, from the route tree to the, you know, to the defense? I mean, what, what, I mean what's, it's, the it's, tough, what's the toughest part about being mentally prepared on the college level? Oh, uh, just you know, from you know, running the spring offense, you you have to uh, get the signals. You have to know what defense they're running. You have to know where to line up. You have to know what route you have, and you have to you have to execute it at full speed. So that that was a big part for me, yeah. because I wanted to think so much. I didn't want to. I wanted to evaluate what I was doing before I did it. You know, now that he, <clears throat> like I said, he prepared me. It allowed me to play full speed, so it, it helped me a lot. What is it? What what is it like though, touching the ball as much as you have, especially the last couple of games? But the last game, I mean, did do you? Does it take those to kind of like let yourself kind of go a little bit? You understand yeah, what I'm saying? It, it kind of play free. It definitely does. You know, it helps me out a lot when when I do have the ball in my hands. You know, it makes me more comfortable, and I feel like that I am more comfortable with the ball now. You know, at this level, because I've had it in the past games, and so you know, going on in the future, I feel like I could be more comfortable with it. Hey, Jalen, how did you uh, in your first start as the punt returner? How did you you look on film. What was the feedback from the coaches on, on how you did? Oh, I feel like I looked pretty well, you know, and I feel like they they, they gave me good feedback as far as what, how, uh, how well I did. You know, they said I was aggressive. You know, I didn't I didn't shy back from the coverage. I I, uh, I got the ball and I put my foot in the ground and went. So I think they liked that a lot. It's a battle. It's a battle. Is that your job now? Is that your job now? Uh, as far as I know, I, th I think it's my job. You know, it's my job to keep that job. So I feel like I did a pretty uh, good job in the game Saturday as far as uh, production. So uh, going on forward, I, I just want to, you know, uh, be more productive back there, and I feel like I can break a couple. When is that determined? Is that determined midweek? Is that determined on Thursday? Or do you, do you find out Saturday that you're the guy? When do they let you know you're the guy? I mean, they tell you uh, early in the week, but, you know, it, you have to uh, produce well in practice to play in the game. So, mm -hmm. I mean, we uh, we have a, a punt return day. That's and right, if, yeah. if I do well in practice, you, you, you mean you're you're basically the starter that week. So. Jalen. <laughs> I got you. Uh, I was reading this weekend you gave up. The chance to play quarterback, yeah. I think it's some fairly substantial D1 schools. Really why, why did you do that to come here and not play your natural position? Oh, because I felt like you know, the, for the next level for me, it wouldn't be quarterback just because of you know the height and all that stuff. And I felt like it was a lot of challenges there for me to play at the next level. And so looking at it, you know, it was easier for me to play. Uh, I mean, I didn't want to necessarily take the easier route, mm -hmm. but I feel like I took the smarter route. As far as moving to receiver, Coach Meyer has definitely uh, made me a better receiver, and I continue to get better every week. What were those schools, or one school that gave you a legit, you saw a path to play fairly quickly? Right. I mean, I feel like you know Cincinnati was pretty high on me at quarterback, but I felt that was just because I was right in the area too, and they wanted me there. So I mean, all the schools that pretty much told me a quarterback at first, but I, and I kind of felt that they were going to switch me. That's why I just went ahead and switched myself. Yeah. Do you have like friends or family or anybody students and somebody sits next to you in a class or something that brings up Michigan State or what's ahead for you guys? Uh, both of you, you won by the exact same score on Saturday. You're like in lockstep toward this meeting you got on November 8th. I mean, you know, you you try not to look ahead as far because you know we got two big games coming up. Before that, but you know, if people talk about it, and you got to kind of try to try to stay away from it. But it's always in the back of your mind, you know, Michigan State, Michigan State. But we can't look past the good Penn State team that we have this weekend. So, what is it that makes them a good Penn State team? Uh, Penn State, you know, they have a great university and a great program. I think that's a big, you know, big reason they're a good team. They uh, they stuck together through all the adversity they had, which also makes them a good team. So, you know, that's that's a good one thing we have to uh, look forward to going into Penn State. What do you know about? Right, what do you know about their fan base? Because I, I expect yeah. they'll be pretty loud. On oh side. yeah, I'm sure. I, I've never been to Penn State, right. you know, so right. I've heard about it from the uh, form my, my teammates. Said it was pretty pretty uh, crazy environment. So I'm looking forward to that as well. So. What's the culture like in that wide receivers room? I mean, wide receivers 
have a reputation right. for being you know, you know it's kind of it's an inter- we have an interesting group you know we have some, some definitely some some uh, interesting personalities I think everybody has their own and that's <laughs> I mean I, that comes from being a wide receiver so I mean coach Smith he I think he handles it all well in our own little personalities and you know it's fun I mean I love my guys to death I, I feel like they love me so yeah. Can you elaborate on the personalities? <laughs> uh, we got who we got? We got Mike Thomas. He's kind of the, the 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 clown of the uh, the class clown of the of the room. You know, he always makes those comments. You got Evan Spencer, the the, the leader. The he's like the, the class president. So <laughs> <laughs> we got we got Devin Smith. He's the goofiest one in the room. He he do all the impersonations and stuff like that. Mock all the coaches. And you got Don Trey. He, he's the he probably the, the jokester. Or the order, he the class comedian. He talks about everybody. He don't ever let nobody take a break about the outfits and stuff. And then we got Corey Smith. He kind of quiet, but he is the clown too. We we all clowns. What about you? And then, nah, I don't know about me. I'm just I'm just listen to Coach Smith and go to practice. That's what I do. <laughs> but you guys are all. I mean, you guys are all sharing the load. And a lot right. of times receivers, you know, they want the ball. You know, I mean, right. you know, Keyshawn. Right. I mean, I feel like you know we want to win more than we want the ball. So I mean, if we if we do have to get the ball to win, I feel like you know we we can make the plays that is given to us. So that's that's why it's not you know so much of a battle in the room anymore because we just want to win. When you got a young quarterback, is it easier to lobby for the ball? JT was saying after the game that <laughs> after every play, the, the five guys or the four guys who don't get the ball, they were all open too because he hears about it. Oh uh, yeah, and it, that that is one thing that you come off the sideline, even if you're open or not, you're gonna tell the quarterback you're open because you want to <laughs> at least get looked at or something. But I mean, you know, JT is he's doing a great job, and I, you know, I really, I really think he stepped up to the challenge of being a quarterback here and. Um, uh, although we do tell him that we're open, he, he still goes through his reason. He's making the correct throws and he's leading us to victory. The pass that he threw to you, I think there's a skinny post right before uh, Nick's touchdown pass. Is that about as well as you can throw that play? Um, yeah, he, yeah, yeah. I mean, I, you can't put it any better. He put it right there for me to catch and, and picked up a good first down. So, Both Rod Smith and Evan Spencer said that they saw a moment when it clicked for JT leadership-wise. Is there a moment that stands out to you where you just thought, kids got it? Yeah, I think we, the locker room, and we was in the locker room before went the game after we lost to Virginia Tech. You know, he kind of put the offense on his back and took responsibility for the offense, and uh, he told us that he got us no matter what. And I think uh, that really sunk into everybody on the offensive side, especially me, you know, being young, being in the same class as him, really meant a lot for me to uh, feel like he really had my back because I really got here. So. Are you talking about in the post-game locker room or the locker room before, before the next the, game? Before the next game. Kent State? Yes, yeah, right, before yeah, the next yeah. game. You guys are putting up some big numbers offensively. You're playing a team, Penn State, statistically at least, right. defensively, they're top five in the country, right. number one against the run. Do you, as an offense, is like, all right, let's go. I mean, do you look forward to a challenge yeah. against a defense like this? Uh, yes, sir. I, I think we definitely look forward to a challenge, you know, because we always we want to be considered one of the best offenses in the country, just like they're considered one of the best defenses. So I feel like if we just go out and execute like we been, have been in the past couple of weeks, that we can score, uh, you know, 50 points again. Jalen, is your game uh... – how would you describe your game specifically when you got the ball in your hands? Are you full speed ahead? Or are you able to see things that kind of like uh, surprise you sometimes? I mean, how would you describe when you have the ball in your hands and, and what you're doing after that? Uh, I feel like you know when when I get the ball, I just you know I want to score. So yeah. as soon as I grab it, I, I turn up field as quick as I can and run as fast as I can to st- the straightest line to the end zone. So go ahead. Well, no, but what are you seeing? I mean, but obviously, you know, if there's a guy standing in front of you, you can't run right over. You know, right, right. I mean, I mean what, what, it, it, how are you taking it all in, I guess, you know? You know, it's, it's, it, come, it comes quick. It comes quick. It's quicker than high school, I, I can tell you that. So, I mean, yeah. Yeah, I'm getting adjusted to it. You know, more and more I get the ball in my hands, I feel like I can make more people miss. But, you know, it, it's coming to me. It's coming to me. How much of the offense have we questions. seen so far? In other words, is there stuff that you guys are working on in practice the last couple of weeks that you just – you just haven't rolled out in a game yet. How much of the offense have you seen so far on Saturdays? Um, I think the spread offense it, it, it's so broad that it, you really can't show all of it in one game because it's you know it's built to beat so many different defenses. Mm-hmm. So I think yes, we do have a lot of stuff that we we haven't ran in the game that we can run in the future. Is there stuff that you guys work on in practice that you're like? I hope we get to that this week. Oh, yes, yeah. definitely. It's definitely, you know, you a certain player, you, he always has his favorite plays. And it's, it's certain plays that we run that I wish we ran in the game. Yeah. So, for the record, there are no divas in the Ohio State 
wide receiver room? Oh, we have definitely have Davis. <laughs> yes, we have Davis. I can't tell you their names because they they my brothers, but we have <laughs> Davis in okay. the wide receiver room. And uh, how much do you guys have to fight uh, when that diva nest comes out? You guys fight it or do you embrace uh, it? No, I think I consider us as brothers. So yeah, we we fight it. We definitely fight it because we want each other to get better. So we fight, we fight the divaness in the, each other. Are so there, hopefully it comes out. Are there any divas in the hybrid bat hybrid bat cubicle? <laughs> <laughs> out of me and Dante? Yeah. Oh, uh, but I, uh, yeah, I consider him more deep than me. But, <laughs> but, but hopefully he doesn't see this. So. <laughs>